Okay, so let's take a look at how to create a new project in IntelliJ under Windows 10, in which we will be reading a text file that will be included in the project. So we'll start up a new project as we do normally. So I'm just naming the uh, the project, and I'm going to open it in, a, in this window right here. And each project has its own structure to it. And here in the top level of the structure, we're going to put a new file. And we're going to name that file. This will be a text file. And usual extensions would be TXT or CSV or something like that. And now you can see it's inside of the project and I can type inside of the editor, inside of IntelliJ, to show what the contents is. And in this case, the file will contain this is my text file, period. Okay, that's available. So now I'm going to create a new Java class the normal way I would in the source folder. I have my class right here. And now I'm going to create a, a method and it'll be a main method. And I will include um, file uh, input libraries as well. And, uh, and so I'm just, I'm just creating a regular class and a regular method inside of a regular Java program. The only difference is I now have access to a text file that it will read as well. And it's important that this text file be inside of the project, otherwise uh, we won't know where to find it when we compile and run the program here. Okay, so uh, I'm going to name the file right here, and the name of the file is going to go into a string. It's going to be my text file dot txt because it's inside of my project and I've already defined it. Now, of course, if you're deploying a project like this, then you also have to say where the file is going to be located or how it's going to be imported and that. But for the sake of, of this project, it's just important to have it inside of your project. All right. Next, we're going to have a try catch pair of blocks like this. And that's important when you're doing file reading and writing. Sometimes there are problems that occur and so you want to catch exceptions when they when they occur during file reading and writing. So in this case, I'm just going to say if there's a problem with, say, finding the file, um, I'll have an error that comes up. I'll print to the screen file read error like that. Now inside of the try block, I'm going to uh, put the, the meat and potatoes of, of what I'm trying to do, okay, which is to create a file input stream object. I'm going to use var instead. Um, and I'm going to name it my file object and I'm going to say it's a new file input stream type object. Okay, like that. I'm going to name the file that is going to be placed inside of this uh, file input stream. Okay, and I've defined that in the string on line six. All right, so I've now got a file, uh, file input stream object called my file object. And I'm going to create a little integer piece of data variable uh, that will be used to read individual pieces of that input stream. Okay. And then I'm going to create a while loop that will cycle through all of that file input stream. And every time it does one piece of data at a time, it will print it out. I have to do a cast of that data into a char uh, to interpret it as a character. Okay, like an ASCII character. So inside of the while control block, I'm saying that I'm going to do something and say it's not equal to negative one. So it's not equal to negative one, then I want to print out the data that was captured. How do we capture that data? I say my data is equal to my file object dot, and I call the read method. So dot read parenthesis parenthesis. Okay, so as long as the output of my file object dot read isn't negative one, then we print the character that was captured. Okay. So basically at this stage, I'm compiling it. Well, I'm building it and, and I'm going to run it. And then you'll see, uh, you'll see at the bottom of the screen that it will, once it's finished compiling and running, it will print out the contents of the, of the, uh, of the file. Now note that I didn't use print line, I used print instead. And that's important because I don't want to insert a new line every time I read a character. I want them to all come out one beside the other, not one on top of the other when it's being displayed. Okay. 
So I'm about to run it. My computer's a little slow. And there we go. This is my text file. You can see at the bottom of the screen, it was able to read the contents of that file, which is fantastic. Okay, now let's imagine that instead of um, uh, creating the file within IntelliJ, you want to import a file, say from Notepad or some other application. So I've written something in Windows Notepad and I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna save it to the desktop. Right there. And I'm gonna name that file and then I'll show you how to import that file if you're working in Windows how to copy it and then paste it into IntelliJ. Okay, so that file is now Windows text, uh, it's, it's now a Windows text file, it's on the desktop. I'm now going to switch over and, um, and go back into IntelliJ. But what I have to do first is I have to copy that file. I have to find that file and not drag it, but I need to copy it. Okay, so I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna say copy right there. So I right click on the file, I've copied it and now I go into my IntelliJ, I go to the top of the project and I say paste, like that. And it confirms the, the name and, and where it's going to be pasted into in my project. You can see the contents of it. We now have it imported into IntelliJ. So I go back into my IntelliJ project and I rename the string, or I rename the contents of the string to be the name of the new file that's just been imported in. So my notepad file.txt. And I'm basically gonna compile and run this program one more time, but this time the string has a different name. So it's the different file name that's been that's gonna be imported. And it found it. You can see there it says uh, this is my notepad file. We're good. Like that. So this is how to do it in Windows. Mm -hmm.